In the past, Andrew suffered episodes of depression. His doctors now prescribe medication to try and prevent a relapse. He's so close to finishing, I wish I could find a way to get him out of bed and back to the computer. What have you got to do to get this thesis underway? Well, I've got to read. I've got to finish reading the new book. The new theoretically book. And then I'm just going to sit down and start writing. And um, I could normally do it. No, I can do it if my mood is all right. I just like ah, oh, but if you know, if I'm if I'm down, I just can't do anything. I just can't do it because I can't concentrate. I can't. You can't concentrate, and your short-term memory goes completely to pot. You just. Do you feel better today? You're okay enough today to write it. Um, well, yeah, I feel much better today. Um, oh, I could, I'll try. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna try. <laughs> I really don't understand Andrew's depression. He seems to have been functioning okay all year. Why is it all coming apart now? I felt there was something missing from the picture, so I went to see his mum to find out more. To a restaurant one night and I was sitting on the it was on the that one. Wow. Really sweet that photo, isn't it? That's beautiful. He could really play the violin. Oh yes. Oh he could, yeah. Uh, how did you know? That he was what? Musical. Uh well, when he was a baby, whenever some music came on, he'd start to, to jump around and his head would start bouncing around. He's a small baby, I suppose, I don't know. But I think he was just bored, and, and the reason was I got him to play a musical instrument, because I thought it'd help his boredom. We didn't really know there was all that musical. Was he very different from your other children? Well, he was much, yeah, and in some ways he was. Uh, my other son, he was sort of uh, never badly behaved. He was always a very perfect sort of child, well behaved. Easy, easy doll. That's a sort of similar one to that other one. He would absolutely have a fit if you showed him that. That was giving a speech at school when he was the school captain. Which one? <laughs> oh, wow. I know, isn't it funny? Wow. So when did he realise that you had an abnormally talented child? When he um, was six months old and he started to speak. He looked up and said, light, light. That's when I thought he was tall. And then when we were in, I was in the car, and he was in the little baby seat, he wanted to read the stop signs and everything. Then I took him up to book him into preschool, you know, the, the little, and, and the teacher up there had a thing on here and her name was Dorothy Pye. And he read her thing on here and he said, Hello, Mrs. Dorothy Pye. <laughs> and she said, how does he know my name? And I said, he just read it on your thing there. And she couldn't believe it. He must have thought that holding his baby in your arms, he could say the word light. He must have had some imagining. Well, I sort of thought, and I taught him, I really stressed that everybody's good at something. Because I didn't want him to get swollen headed. And I said, look, your little friend's really good at cricket. OK, so you're good at reading and good at words. And he accepted that, that everybody's good at something. And that was his talent. So I, don't th I think that's why he never, ever became swollen-headed or over it. Yeah. What I did with, with him is lots and lots of after-school things so he wouldn't get bored. Like he spoke French fluently when he was about six. Because I got him some French, French lessons after school. I thought another language would be really good. And he absolutely loved it. I'd go and pick him up, and he'd be there playing Scrabble in French. He was writing comedy when he was about 12. Yeah. Three years ago, within a month of his 19th birthday, Andrew was admitted to hospital, where he spent six weeks receiving treatment for severe depression, including a course of electroconvulsive therapy, or ECT. 
Yeah, so when he made his speech as school captain at the end of year 12, I knew there was something wrong when he made the speech. He made this brilliant speech. It was just fantastic. But there was these underlying, these sort of undercurrents. He was sort of having a go at the education system, a go at the teachers. And the teachers, a lot of them didn't pick it up. A, lot of, a few of them came to me after the speech and said, that was the most fantastic speech. But I knew that there was something wrong that night when he made that speech. It just was a sort of... He was almost aggressive towards the school and the teachers and the whole education system. Um, I noticed it first. I noticed it before Peter. I just noticed he was quiet at the dinner table. But a lot of children go quiet in their teens. I mean. No, I could tell that it wasn't him. No, he'd just stand in the middle of the kitchen and just look down at the floor, you know. And um, got a little bit aggressive. And that's certainly not him. He's not an aggressive person. You know, he loved school, loved his friends, was happy to go off to school. Yeah, it's just funny. I don't really understand it. Mm -mm. Don't think anybody does till it happens to them. I realise now that Andrew's music is much more than just a distraction for him. In fact, I think it's the only thing holding him together at the moment. He's now got a job singing in a cafe, even been offered his first live radio spot. Oh, we see Mary Antoinette, they left a smile upon her face. We see Nero Roa blasted, and they didn't leave a trace. And computer-generated music's digital embrace And squabbles over who'll be first to blow their minds in space And the back end of religion when all good families said grace Oh, but I saw you and you saw me too A safer place You, only, you sort of understand if you've come into contact with it yourself, personally. So maybe you know, people in contact with me will then understand someone else. <laughs> They'll say, oh, I knew this stupid, annoying, ugly boy who was depressed and, and uh, kept grumbling about it and crying and begging me to come and visit him. You know, that's what depression is. Which it is. Uh, yeah, no, no, but it does. It, I don't know. When I'm down, I, it's my it's my vocation. It's just it's what I am. It's my job to be depressed. <laughs> it, it takes up every waking minute. Of me just <laughs> thinking about it. It's a good sign that I was nervous here though this afternoon because it means I cared. Because I do care about the guitar and about my songs and that. Like, uh, thanks for letting me play. Uh, that was good fun. <laughs>